Good morning. You are in for such a treat today. I think running around inside of my head, I have maybe a three or a three and a half hour message for you this morning. So grab a cup of coffee and a box of donuts and sit back and relax. I'd like to begin by thanking those of you who have responded to the inquiring minds this week. You know, I feel that my job is not so much to teach you anything, it's to encourage you to think, to actually take the time and think, use logic, use deductive reasoning. And I believe that when we do that, our awareness elevates. And my hope is, my intention is, for that awareness to elevate to the point where we become aware of just how much a part of every facet of our lives, of our lives, is connected with the unseen, with God, with spirit. And when we are in that awareness, in that consciousness, our lives seem to be better. The lives of those around us are better. You know, I watched a, a very interesting program on PBS this week. I don't remember the name of it exactly, but it was something like, our brains have been hacked. Maybe some of you saw it as well. It started off quite oh, technically, explaining that our brains have two basic thinking centers. One is kind of our base brain. All mammals, even some reptiles have it. And that's, that's that part of the brain that thinks fight, flight, or freeze. It's all about our survival mode. Then the other part of our brain actually has the ability to process information and allows us to think in the moment, in real time. And this program told us how much that part of our brain has been hacked. And it's ha been hacked by, we'll call it the technology that is owned and controlled by the monster, the corporate empire. We have all this technology could be used to be such a boon to humanity. But instead, it's used like a perpetual psychological evaluation of each of us. Every phone call, every text, every visit on the internet, what we watch on television is all analyzed as part of this psychological evaluation. I'm sure you all get email. I get a couple of emails every week from Netflix. Patrick, we have this new program. We know you will enjoy it based on everything else you've watched. We get emails marketing specific items that they know we're interested in and we've bought. We have bit by bit by bit by bit been brainwashed, conditioned to not think, to not take the time to stop and have logic, reasonable thought. We've been conditioned to react or to have habitual responses to almost every facet of life, almost every occurrence in our day-to-day -day lives. It's like we're on this train 
bound for oblivion and extinction. Don't have to think, just buy stuff. We don't have to do this, just do what we're telling you to do. Become a mindless robot that just does what you're told and buy what we tell you to buy. Oh, you'll be happy and you'll enjoy it. Are we? I think not. I'm going to share with you something. As some of you know, and as I talk about from time to time, I'm involved with a, a reader's say, theater called Off the Page. And Kathleen Haney and Hilary Moore are part of this. And I have the privilege and the pleasure for being the opening act for most of their performances. I play my guitar and I sing a few songs that coincide most of the time with the theme of that particular production. And last January, the last week in January, they were doing performances at Copperfields and the Abacus building over in um, Sebastopol, and I, I was very busy. It seems like uh, Friday night I had something going on, and then Saturday I couldn't even do it because I had to be at the airport, and the next day was our annual meeting, and then the following Sunday after I do church I'm pretty burned out, and so I went over and did that, but I didn't stay for the performance. I did my little shtick, and then I left. Well, here a few weeks ago, they, to keep off the page alive and in people's minds and in part of their lives, they did a online recording of the January show. It was based on transformation. And there's usually like I don't know, five to ten different readings, um, short stories or poems or, or um, sonnets uh, from local writers. So I was interested to see what I had missed, so I watched it. And one of the, one of the poems that was done by the Peter's Theater group off the page was a thing called Junkyard Dog. And I was touched and I was inspired. So I called Hillary and I said, Hillary, may I use that poem? Can I get a copy of it? May I use that for a talk on Sunday, on a Sunday? She said, well, it's fine with me, but you really need the permission of the author. So she put me in touch with the lady, and her name is Margaret Barkley. She lives in Seattle, or in Sebastopol. And I conversed with her via email, and she gave me permission to use it. She said she would like me to mention her name. And I'm going to do more than that. She gave me permission to share her email. And her email is mbarkley, B-A-R-K-L-E-Y, at sonnet.net. And this poem, Junkyard Dog, is, has been published, and I've got to read it here. It's been published in a book it's called the 2019 Redwood Writers Poetry Anthology. And the title of the book is Crow, In the Light of Day, In the Dark of Night. And it's available on Amazon. And if you would like the link, I have the link. Call me or email me. I'll be happy to share it with you. And maybe you'd like to, if you feel 
a similar way that I do after hearing this poem, um, perhaps you might like to email Margaret at mbarclay at sonic.net. So here it goes. It's called Junkyard Dog by Margaret Barclay. Let's say, for the sake of discussion, that before you were born, you were made of light or something like it. And let's say that you were not anything at all, like this oddly shaped living thing, no offense, that you are now, but that indeed something of you existed. Maybe you were just more see-through, or more vast, or fluffier, but there you were. And then, in one excited wet moment, the body you know began. And it grew for nine months, and it landed here. It was the luck of the draw exactly where. Probably not into towels on a dirt floor, for example. My guess is that you arrived in a well-lit well sterile room, probably naked for a second. And then you began collecting things, because that's what we do. And now here you are. Here we are together in these bodies, living in a culture filled with things, in a country where the people in charge are like dumb, drooling junkyard dogs protecting their piles of metal and their drums of oil, and even, even sending some of us to faraway places to do their bullying for them. We don't know how to be with this, but we do the best we can. Collecting things, food and clothes and houses, electronic devices and to-do lists, and earning money to collect more things and trying to have a good time in the process. Meanwhile, we start to feel a wee bit protective, like junkyard dogs ourselves. Guarding those piles of stuff that we've gathered, taking things a little too personally sometimes, and lunging at the fences that we've built all around all of our stuff. It's all so much that sometimes we have to hire insurance people and attorneys to help. But here's the great thing. In the middle of all of this collecting and protecting, we seem to have been granted most of the time the ability to learn and to feel and to notice what was here all along. The sunset, wild ass fields of orange poppies and the fact that having a body is actually quite wonderful, especially when we're, we're rubbing them around on each other or dancing we discover that loving someone else feels better than anything and that the important stuff can't be collected at all. And somewhere along the way, there is that tin man moment when you know you have a heart because it's breaking. And you begin to realize that courage is nothing. It's nothing like a slavering, fanged dog. Courage is being willing to let go. Open the damn gate and share the goods. And if you're lucky, by the time you're old, you've found humility. 
which doesn't mean you're unimportant. It means that you're everything. Because we're all made out of the same stuff. Some kind of light, something that's vast and fluffy and covered in skin. Junkyard dogs, the monster in each of us. Thank you, Margaret. And so it